Hi everybody. Today we're going to functionally draw the bones and palpable landmarks of the thoracic limb. By functional I mean you'll use this in the future for thinking about the function of muscles on these levers. So it's important that we draw them correctly. So to begin with, let's talk about what you're not going to do. You're not going to just kind of come in here and draw some things going around like this. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take your time and kind of go from landmark to landmark. So let's start with the scapula. The scapula, we're going to go from the dorsal border down to the acromion. We're going to think about these two points, and then we're going to connect a line between the two. Then we're going to draw the humerus, and we're going to go from the greater tubercle to approximately where the medial epicondyle is, and we're going to connect the two. And we're going to make sure that this lever spans a little bit further than where the scapula intersects. Next, we're going to draw the ulna, and we're going to make a mark at the olecranon tuber and down here at about the lateral stylite process, and again, we'll connect the two. Then we'll draw the radius cranial to the ulna throughout the antebrachium. For the carpal bones, we'll focus on the accessory carpal bone and we'll kind of draw a little block here of bones and that'll represent the carpal bones. So that would be the carpal bones. Beyond the carpal bones, we'll draw the metacarpal bones. Meta means beyond, metacarpal beyond the carpus. And then finally, we'll finish off with the proximal, middle, and distal phalanx. To draw the palpable prominences, we'll start off with the spine of the scapula, and we'll just indicate that runs basically the length of the scapula on the lateral aspect, and that's 1A. 1B would be the acromion of the scapula, and that's that distal palpable teardrop-shaped structure on the distal aspect of the spine. For the humerus, we will outline the position of the greater tubercle, which is in the cranial lateral aspect of the bone. So that would be 2A. We'll also indicate where the lateral epicondyle is, which is on the distal lateral aspect of the humerus, also palpable, that's 2B. 2C is going to be the medial epicondyle, kind of difficult to draw, but we'll envision it on the medial aspect of the bone and on the other side of the lateral epicondyle. For the ulna, we'll outline the olecranon tuber, and that's on the proximal, called a proximal part of the ulna, 3A. And we'll also outline the distal lateral palpable lateral stylate process for the ulna, and we'll label that with a 3B. For the carpal bones, we'll basically focus on the accessory carpal bones, and that's that palmar lateral aspect of the carpus, and we'll label that as 4A. It's also palpable. And then to finish off, we, you can easily palpate the metacarpal bones and the digits, so we'll just kind of outline those and think about how we can feel those and, and figure out where they are in the live animal.